gentlemen, transforming Serie A. Serie A, of course, has been one of the biggest leagues in the world over many decades, from some of the players to the best players to the best teams. But the league is transforming, growing around the world with an international ambitious strategy to really grow their teams, their players, and really introduce what they are doing to the rest of the world. Uh, we'll have insights from those in their Italian headquarters. We'll have insight from their office here in the Middle East. And also a very special Serie A legend will join us on stage. But before we do that, let's just have a quick look at how the league is innovating around the world. The IBC in Lisone is a wonder of Italian technology, built in just four months. It's the state VR production house that provides all content of Liga Serie A as a new media company. Felipe Anderson trova Luis Alberto! Eccolo il colpo del mago! All matches are broadcast for television in ultra-high definition 4K Full HD. Live production includes Steadicam and Gimbal for cinematographic shooting and additional cameras with innovative points of view, such as the acrobatic drone, the rail camera, and game camera drone. To guarantee a complete immersive experience. The IBC provides centralized graphics for all broadcasters in several languages. Personalized virtual LEDs for the 20 Serie A teams with five different feeds in Italy, Europe, Asia, Middle East and North Africa and the Americas. The IBC's technology includes event data tracking plus IM coach analysis and a centralized platform for in-depth analysis available for coaches. International magazine shows on Serie A. An innovative VAR center containing eight VAR rooms and a position for the supervisor dubbed the best in the world by Italian match officials and semi-automatic offside technology for real-time offside VAR decisions. The optical tracking system, 12 cameras in use at each stadium, uses advanced image processing and machine learning to instantly and accurately track the players and the ball across the whole pitch. The ball and 29 skeletal points are tracked on each player with ultra-low latency, and offside lines drawn within 0.5 seconds integrated seamlessly within the VAR system. Three MCRs, a centralized quality control for the multilateral program feed for colorimetric coherence on all matches. Anti-piracy and content protection focus through global monitoring on IPTV, websites, apps, social platforms, and a due diligence activity on the broadcasters and the new dynamic blocking in Italy integrated with cybersecurity and digital platform watermarking. 24 workstations to create automated and personalized highlights packages. 16 commentary booths for Italian, English, and Arabic commentators. Turama! Destro! That's scoring a beauty! Are you had a pad of fire in Marcos Turam? A social media department managing 22 accounts in eight different languages. With more than 9 million subscribers to Syria's YouTube channel, a record for football leagues around the world. The IBC in Lisoni is at the cutting edge of technology. The future here has already begun. So as you can see, plenty of work being done, of course, by Serie A. Delighted to welcome onto the stage Michel Cicciarese, the Marketing and Commercial Director of Serie A. Alfonso Di Stefano, the Managing Director of Serie A in the Middle East. And of course, a two-time Serie A winner, Clarence Seydor, for a round of applause, please. Major. Not only to Serie A title, I think that uh, Clarence has won something else. He's yes. won <laughs> plenty of trophies, and we'll come to that as well. Uh, Michel, l let's start with you. Yeah. Why this ambitious strategy? So, uh, first of all, Salam Aleikum, Buonasera, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, great to share the stage with you guys, and especially with Clarence. It's, um, you know, humbly and sincerely speaking it's been a journey it's um, like try to create a strategy where we've put together 20 years of work in the last two three years 
What has been happening in Serie A is that finally, three years ago, we started a new strategy. The club voted on a new big investment in order to really leverage on the values of the club itself. And especially in a region like this, where we are today, where the love and the bond for our clubs is strong, and we have seen this today with all our IP, like AC Milan, Juventus, uh, uh, Inter, Roma, Napoli, this is what uh, the goal that we have, and we should leverage on it. But the only way to do that is not to focus anymore on the domestic market. The real mistake that we did was to only think about Italy and not looking abroad. If you look at the recent number <coughs> from YouGov, we have 830 million fans in all over the world, and only 33 million are inside Italy. So what we have to do and the path that we are taking is, first of all, creating content and investing on our properties. What the video that you've seen today has been the first uh, step because Lissone, the International Broadcast Center, is the enabler of all our strategy because through Lissone we distribute the content from all the stadiums in 17 cities in Italy to 67 broadcasters in 203 countries in all of the world. And that is the only way to cut every potential agency in the, in the chain and be us, the owner of the content, and then distribute it in all over the world. And the step two is all about the access. So if we have access to players, access to content, it's where we can talk with the audience. And this is exactly what we are taking. And it started with the ABC, and then, of course, opening offices abroad. We have an office based in Middle East, in Abu Dhabi, we will soon be in uh, Saudi Arabia as well. And uh, in, um, we open an office in New York and we are opening in Singapore to talk with the Far East. Because the only way to engage really the local audience, uh, and Alfonso can talk about this <laughs> yeah. much better than me locally, is uh, to really create a relationship with the broadcaster every day and not selling the rights and then uh, uh, escape and be hidden for three years after the, until the renewal. The only way is to really engage audience and create uh, projects. Well, that's fantastic and innovative as well. So, Alfonso, I guess the question to you is, how do you translate that into the work you're doing here in the Middle East? I think there is a video going or not? No, it's just there. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, uh, the, the spirit to um, open, as Michele was uh, mentioning before, the international offices, is basically to be much clo closer to the audience, to uh, also the, 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 the youngsters, footballers. So what we have done recently with the, um, with the office in Middle East, which is based in, in, in Abu Dhabi, but is overseeing the entire market, which for us uh, is absolutely the main objective, uh, uh, being aware of what is happening in this region. It's a complete transformation, uh, not only in sport and football, but uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, uh, cultural. So uh, what we have done in the last uh, uh, couple of months is uh, uh, first of all, to activate uh, through a proper digital strategy uh, based on the social media, which are very popular in the region, uh, naming uh, uh, Snapchat and recently TikTok, uh, to engage the uh, general audience, but in particular the new generation, the so-called Gen Z, uh, I don't want to go into the obvious, but uh, this is absolutely the focus. So uh, through um, um, absolutely detailed digital strategy with content creators from the region and with uh, uh, a team which is absolutely focused on what is happening around the region, uh, we are trying, because it's a long run, I just want to underline that, I mean, it's not uh, uh, opening the office here and, okay, you generate the massive brand awareness uh, of Serie A and uh, stimulating the growth of a league. So it's a complex process which needs time, which needs resources, but we absolutely uh, are on the right track to uh, engage the audience here in the region by knowing that uh, is uh, uh, from all over the world is one of the youngest population. Uh, generally, uh, it is uh, 
digital native. So uh, we are trying to work beyond the live rights. Uh, and as you can see now, I mean, uh, in the background, uh, we are showing uh, several initiatives that we threw uh, during the last uh, nine months uh, since the opening of the office. And as you can see, okay, football, but also we try to intercept the new generation also through uh, other form of, uh, uh, of cross marketing through other verticals. We partner with the NBA, with Alex Del Piero. We partner with F1 through Fabio Cannavaro. Uh, we uh, recently launched with our exclusive distributor in Middle East a talent show uh, which will stimulate also participation in football because, I mean, it's not only, okay, we live in a, a digital era, but, I mean, we have to be fully aware that, I mean, football is a sport, so we need to practice sport, we need to stimulate the youngest generation to uh, take part to this beautiful game and through uh, our, again, our uh, distributor in Middle East we launch uh, this special project which is called Italian Dream. It will be disclosed, I mean, officially to the audience in Middle East in, uh, for the um, kickoff of next season. We are uh, currently uh, producing this talent show which will be shot uh, uh, around the Middle East in four countries and it is targeting to find new talents in the region which will have the chance in a near future to participate also in Syria. So this is in a nutshell uh, what we are, again, what we just initiated to do in this region uh, and uh, thanks to also the several bodies that, I mean, uh, uh, several sport bodies we are cooperating with, we hope to let uh, the Serie growing uh, in parallel with also the sport participation and football in general in the region. So what we've learned is everyone's very busy at Serie A at the moment. Clarence, let me bring you in. Um, you had an amazing career in Serie A. Two titles with Milan, two Champions Leagues with Milan as well, and multiple Champions Leagues all over. But on the pitch, there was a brilliant Napoli story last season. Three Champions League semi-finalists, three... Uh, finalists across the UEFA club competition. So what is that saying about Serie A at the moment and the stories it's generating on the pitch? Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you hear me well. Yes? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think from, a, from a football point of view, um, over the last years, uh, Serie A became competitive again. Um, I remember when I came uh, in the 90s, they were like uh, the top 10 teams were super competitive. Um, there would maybe be 12, 14 teams with top strikers who would play in the national team. Top defenders that would play in the national team from all those teams. The characteristics of, of Italian football has marked my career um, very much. And, and I think many people in the world still today. And what we have seen that that is coming back um, the uh, the competitiveness of the league um, that people don't like to play against Italian uh, Italian teams internationally those things you start hearing again because it's always so tough so I think that that is coming um, in the right direction again and Napoli has been uh, a breathtaking uh, experience from last year for sure absolutely Michelle I have to ask you how important is the on-field product to support what you're doing off the pitch as well. You need both of them to work together, don't you? Absolutely. We need stories. So what um, Clarence was just saying right now is last year having uh, um, the two Milanese club in the semi-finals together, having uh, Fiorentina in the final of the Conference League, having Roma with Jose Mourinho in the second year in a row in the final of the Europa League created different stories. But of course, the biggest stories that we had it's been Napoli winning the Scudetto after 33 years in the Maradona time. I think that if we can launch this video with the volume on, you will see exactly what does it yeah. mean to create a Made in Italy strategy. Because if we have something that is unique yeah. inside Serie A, is that each club has a story to tell which is beyond each city. And of course, a big part of that strategy is Made in Italy, yeah, which it you is. can see on the screens now. Verona, the tops everywhere is the most beautiful and 
my favourite place to be and that's not being biased. Just... Not for me. In Turin, the people are very nice, they're very polite. Cristina, yeah. So, so... Relaunch? <laughs> <laughs> Music. Grazie. Roma es mágica. Cuando era chico me la pasaba viendo películas. Verona tops everywhere, it's the most beautiful and my favorite place to be and that's not being biased. In Turin, the people are very nice, they're very polite. Que tiene ya su, su antigüedad, pero aquí en Salerno. That's for me the feeling in Turin or IF is they really want to help and yeah, to feel you like home. La ciudad de Monza tiene cosas muy bonitas y creo que Monza es un sitio donde nunca te cansarás de averiguar cosas nuevas. In Belgrade, in my city, we played the football on the streets, one ball and we played like this. A lo que es jugar a fútbol en la calle, yo creo que te enseña lo que es vivir por algo. When you see the fans outside of the bus, in the way they're happy, they give us the positive energy. They're always close with us and they're always supporting us also. They cheer us, they scream for us and they just start singing. It's an amazing feeling. And there was the place when I arrived with the bus, the most beautiful place. Yeah, so basically, in an era where we are not competing with uh, the Premier League, with La Liga, it's an era where we are competing with every kind of entertainment platform. And the only way to catch the attention and the span attention of people, because today, Major, we have uh, kind of 320 advertising uh, messages every single day, but we never pay attention to nothing if that doesn't catch your emotions. Football has something unique in terms of catching emotions, and we have seen the queue at the Serie A booth when Clarence was there. If we play in this way, and we talk about the country and Italy, there are a lot of stories beyond, not only AC Milan, Juve and Inter, but also Salernitana, Sassuolo, Bologna, all the clubs, because everyone loves our country, and that's what we need to deliver to everyone. And the only way to do that is to take the best players and bring them outside of the training center, let them see the city and let them create content in the city itself, talking about food, fashion, culture, everything that is at the core of Italy, which is interesting for real, for everyone, for the young generation, as Alfonso was saying, and not only for the generation Z, but even for the generation Alpha, is what they want to see. They want to see and engage with the, the audience, and the audience comes through the biggest player. Because what they see today are the talents. And if we have Dybala for Roma, Vlaovic for Juve, Lautaro for Inter, Leao for AC Milan, is what the kids are looking for as a model. And that's what we need to give access to our broadcaster. And this content you will see in this region through Abu Dhabi Media and Starts Play, in US through CBS Sports. And there will be broadcasted 60 different contents, three per club. Alfonso, well, I've got to ask you then, and we just touched on it there. How do you tell that Made in Italy story to the audience here in the Middle East? Yes, um, again, um, the sport IPs nowadays are um, uh, what I consider, but I mean, generally uh, are defined entertainment brand. So as uh, we are keeping on saying, uh, football is uh, absolutely global but you need to decline also on a, a local perspective so um, everybody knows milano i mean again not to repeat what michele was saying but uh, lega Serie A represent 20 clubs represent an entire nation because as partners we have the italian government Go it italy is very well known for tourism but again we want to decline it in a contemporary way because the past is the past, amazing. We look back and we take uh, uh, all this gold, but I mean, again, I mean, we, we want to look forward and we want to speak to all the generation. 
uh, and to uh, to do that you need to be contemporary but you need to stay much closer to your audience and this is uh, uh, what uh, the made in Italy is uh, trying to achieve uh, through different initiatives which are in place in the different uh, part of the world where we are present with our offices. Clarence, you've played on the pitch. Just how passionate is the Italian football support? When you played for Milan, just how passionate are the fans? What, what sort of feeling do you get with the passion and, and, and love the Italian fan show? I don't think you can talk about passion. Uh, I mean, uh, football has, has the power to uh, stop wars. Uh, we've seen it in the past. It has the power to unite people. It has the power to, uh, you know, really excite. The most calm, the most educated people become, you know, child again. Um, what is important to say is that the passion that is around the world, and I live in the region of years, it's incredible. And it's football is just like grass it just continues to grow and it never ends so football player um, which I'm not anymore and I'm not on the other side a little bit more um, what I like the, the joy of the players and that they understand that we're not playing for ourselves anything that I have gotten in my career is because of the fans so and, and now this generation understands it even better than before because we didn't have all the social media going on to create our own platform so they're very much aware that they are a brand but that because to be a brand they also need to perform they need to entertain and I think that has increased very very big time um, the passion of the people for, for, for the sports now if I may enter in a point what, what was said before is that Italy has something that very few countries have and that is the history. That is that incredible history of talent that was there, of cups won and everything. So I'm sure that the geniuses behind <laughs> all of this, <laughs> this strategy will be able to combine that with the actuality. And that is something very special, I believe. Michelle, just to add, add to that, Italy is diverse in so many ways. The football is amazing. The food, the culture the entertainment, I guess, is that the aim of this Made in Italy strategy, to package all of that together and, and help tell the story of Italy through football? That is the angle to tell the story. That is the angle to get, catch the attention. But what is more important is not only to talk about ourselves, about food, about fashion, is to make that accessible to everyone and to share this kind of experience. Because when you speak about a football club and then you tell about the story about the country, everyone will get interested and tomorrow will probably fly to Roma or to Florence or to Milano to discover and have this experience and what we should do is to show them how and what's the best player's way to experience that but at the same time we should be as well as humble to come to the different countries to show ourselves to open ourselves and to create content to access that's a, the job that Alfonso is doing in Middle East as well as Andy Mitchell in New York what we have to do is to be there because we have been sleeping on our greatness and then suddenly we woke up saying, oh, what happened? Yeah. Now, now we should run faster than in the past. But fortunately, there is one thing that Clarence was saying which will always stay there. History, heritage and love for the talent that have been growing and creating the Serie A. And if Serie A, we have few clubs here, I can see Bologna right there, Juventus was outside, is the only way is collectively. Not to let a club grow by himself because it, they will always reach a point of saturation and if the league doesn't grow collectively with all together, even the biggest club cannot grow anymore. So you've got the buy-in from you, all your clubs as part you know, of this strategy? Not from me to say, it's whether okay. when a club says that, but yeah, what is happening for real is that the club are putting individual rights. Otherwise, you would never see in a content Leao, uh, Vlaovic, Lautaro and Dybala if there is no buy-in from the club. 
And Alfonso, I've got got to ask you then, you've got the task of waking up those fans in the Middle East or finding some new fans. So how are you going to do it? Yeah, first of all, please join us next January for the Italian Super Cup here in, uh, in Riyadh. So um, it will be a great occasion to to show um, uh, again um, uh, thanks for for the assist uh, i really think that uh, there isn't uh, the, the 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 perfect answer because i mean it's a combination that must uh, have uh, touch I, I i strictly believe in grassroots having played football not at the level of clarence but i mean uh, sportsmanship uh, and uh, sport participation is uh, is very important absolutely because again we are talking about football which is a sport and then uh, you need to uh, to create new initiatives that i mean are relying on solid pillars and they're combining with the new technology which now are essential to in a fast growing world of communication the right audience stimulated and uh, make them uh, uh, f fidelity make the yep. fidelity Loyal. for 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 uh, for Serie A as uh, any other sport league but again to create the excellence of uh, the excellence of uh, Serie A in this region uh, in a long run because it takes time but with the combination of uh, the clubs the stakeholders and uh, with the strategy which is uh, focused to the real consumer of what culture is, which is the youngest footballers. Michelle, I want to also touch on the technology aspect that yep. uh, Alfonso mentioned. You've almost revamped the television side of things. An IB, there's an IBC, it's innovative, multi-language commentary coming from there. Why have you done it firstly? And secondly, how important is it in, in terms of showcasing your product to all of these fans around the world? No, thank you, Mazur, because that's the question. So um, you would have been with me three years ago when we asked to the clubs to invest. What happened? <laughs> They're not here to bring us revenues? No. In order to bring new revenues, first of all, you need to invest on the technology in order to deliver a better product. So three years ago, Serie A was broadcasted through 12 to 15 cameras per game. Now the camera goes from 22 to 30 cameras per game with fly cam, with drones, and especially the data tracking of each game is state of the art. What we have is an OKI technology that tracks every single player on the pitch that delivers data, but not only football data, even metadata and prediction data about how many passes a player could my, might take or how many goal Clarence could have done during the game or that goal in the derby, actually. <laughs> Yeah, but, but jokes apart, the clear point is technology, enhanced technology and data through the broadcast center allows us as an enabler to take in fiber the signal from each stadium, distribute it to the broadcaster in near live and cut 20 different possibility of highlights in five different languages that goes immediately to all the social media spread in nine languages. Believe it or not, three years ago, Seria was speaking only in Italian. Now it speaks in nine languages in 22 different accounts in all over the world. Again, is a path, but we need to roll up our sleeves and make it happen. Only through the three pillars, we, we touch them all, are made in Italy, fun, passion, and technology. If we really work together on these three layers, along with the support of the 20 clubs, yes, we can show and mirror these values in revenues and then on the pitch. And has it almost been a realization that younger fans and fans of different ages are all consuming this content in different ways? That's one point. Everyone is saying that the kids are no more seeing the football games of the 90 minutes, of 94 minutes. It's not true. I mean. <laughs> no, the most... Uh, the, uh, con the, the most... The, is the different the way of con content cons uh, consuming. On TikTok. Yeah. It's football. Football, exactly. So... It's only a way yeah, of uh, consumption from the, from the audience. And I've got to come to the TikTok channel here in the Middle East, launched and grew not to 100,000 in a matter of hours. How important is it to actually 
you know, localize and regionalize that content so fans can enjoy it in whichever language, in whichever way. Because here we are sat in Saudi Arabia. We, I think we all know that fans in different parts of the world will digest content in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I don't want to agree to ourselves, but uh, uh, Serie A has been the first European league to open the TikTok account in Arabic. And uh, we are having a, a great, uh, absolutely great award from uh, this partnership. And uh, to have a voice, tone of voice in, uh, in declining our message to the local audience. So we really believe uh, uh, also on the other side, on the other side of, uh, of the non-live contents in generating uh, and creating story. Uh, also the other way around, because we are allowing also content creators at football fans to be hosted in Italy and to experience uh, not only the live football in the stadium, but also what is uh, the surrounding flavor of the Italian passion for football. As Michele said, it is uh, pretty easy to fly to Italy to watch Inter, uh, FC Internazionale Milano, Milan, the Derby. But who knows about Salernitana Lecce are two absolutely fantastic uh, uh, touristic destinations. So we, again, want to combine passion for football with Italian flavor, contemporary to have the Italian experience uh, through sport and through the passion for football, especially from this region, because let's not forget the Italian league has been the first league to be broadcasted in this region True. historically. And actually, I want to stay on that in some ways because Serie A has been coming to Saudi Arabia. It was one of the first leagues to come. Mm -hmm. How important is, and we're here in Saudi Arabia, so it's important, I think, to touch on it. How important is Saudi Arabia to the future and, and, and what you're trying to do to grow Serie A in this region? We, uh, we have, uh, by data, we have uh, the biggest fan base in the Middle East is placed in this country, especially uh, through the three biggest club historically, Juve Milan Inter, Roma has a huge fan base, and we are uh, stimulating the attention of uh, this audience through new initiatives, especially through uh, partnership that we are putting in place with the local stakeholders through sport participation and uh, uh, events, sport events. One of them, again, uh, is the uh, Italian Super Cup to be hosted next year. New format, four teams, Napoli, Inter, Fiorentina, Lazio. We are uh, uh, absolutely honored to be part also of the, this uh, amazing, uh, not only sport, but is a cultural change in this country that through football, I mean, will uh, uh, pave uh, the way till the next uh, uh, World Cup and through a series of uh, amazing uh, sport and football initiatives to be hosted by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Fantastic. And Clarence, to come to you, the Italian Super Cup is here early next year. How, how much does what Serie A is doing at the moment of their international strategy excite you for the future? Uh, I was a big uh, believer in anything that I've heard today and I've seen over the last period uh, happening, the new strategy. Um, I was fortunate to have an amazing president uh, who was a visionary person um, and he was talking about a lot of things that <laughs> is happening today. <laughs> happened. Uh, happened. Uh, there was always this fight between the clubs and they were always trying to make themselves bigger but it was about that unity that would make the difference and I think that is what is happening right now so I'm very excited to see this actually I believe that um, I believe that Serie A will, will push the clubs in the right direction I think that professionals um, next to me here are really going to elevate um, professionalism and the management that is needed for the for the Italian clubs and not only the clubs, the municipalities and, and everybody, yeah. the whole the whole system needs to understand 
that if Italy wants to continue to compete, it has to go in this direction. So I'm very excited for that. Michelle, that shows that there's good work being done, but you've got a lot of work to do. How are you going to do it? Now, first of all, hearing these words from Clarence uh, gives me only the motivation to go ahead. And uh, yeah, the other point is the municipality. So Italy has won, along with Turkey, the Euro Cup in 32. This finally will allow us to build a new stadium. Because you can put uh, the most advanced cameras and the most of advanced data in every stadium in Italy, but if you don't have facilities that can really welcome people and those families and kids in a proper way, you will never get there. So, and that's a process that Saudi is going through right now, especially in the ambition to the 34. And that's the real goal that we should have is to see at least five to six new stadiums by 2030 in Italy happening. And again, the municipality and the great culture and the great uh, uh, layers that we've been speaking to till now actually have been the barriers till today. Because if you want to build something in Roma, guys, you should need kind of uh, 123 approvals, because otherwise you will find something of the Asian Rome under, um, under the soil. So having the Euro Cup and again football will help is the only way you can have a commissioner in Roma that will skip and overcome the local municipality to saying, yes, we can invest and make it happen. Going on the investment side, just to give a, a, to the audience a clear overview, we have right now in Serie A nine different foreign ownership. Foreign ownership have even the money to invest and they want to create the stadiums. We have Redbird with AC Milan, we have Rocco Commisso with Fiorentina, Saputo family in Bologna, and um, uh, Friedkin family in Roma, all these investors have seen the potential that is behind Serie A. Otherwise, they would have never invested millions and billions if you sum the, the clubs together in our football. So in every the private equity operation that we have seen coming in La Liga, that we have seen coming in, in Bundesliga, the first league that has been approached by CDC for investment has been Serie A three years ago in full COVID time. Because we know the potential is there. Now, the things are finally happening. And step by step, the sports results are happening as well. And we've seen this last, last season. The real achievement that I would love to come back here maybe in, <laughs> next year and say well, they have us back. that uh, <laughs> the stadiums uh, really are happening. Yeah. We need to wrap up very shortly. So, Alfonso, a question to you, and, and we'll, we can go through quickly. What's the last message you'd like to leave with everyone here about the work Serie A is doing? I would say stay tuned. I don't want to be very obvious. Stay tuned. We have a lot of uh, um, amazing projects for for the region and in general for the international audience through what we have been through this, um, this afternoon. And uh, I would like to express uh, gratitude to the organizers and uh, uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in general to to be part of this uh, this forum, which will again I think will take <laughs> will take I mean a permanent place in this region. Correct. And Michelle, for you, what's the final words? The final words are again roll up our sleeve. Yeah, work. That's the only way. And I'm you know you said one thing before we were the first league to come in Saudi. And playing it was 2019 it was in this very city you went to see Milan in uh, in the stadium what I would love to see is a stronger and bold collaboration between the countries because there are we are gonna host together different uh, games not only as a showcase but as a real uh, uh, project to change the game and this will go through the academies to the coach and to how to support and develop the grassroots so yeah, stay tuned is a good uh, line to, to close the panel and uh, shukran, it's been a great pleasure to be here. It's only live things with Italian. You know? <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I mean, um, also uh, through one of the projects that we are uh, running, I would uh, dream to see uh, a guy, a kid from, uh, from the region to be a great uh, 
talent uh, in yep. the future in Serie A. This is the spirit. So, I mean, uh, we are uh, launching this project. We really believe in it. And uh, it's a dream, Italian dream. So, I mean, let's, well, let's, let's the kids dream. And this, that, is, this is football. And I'd like to close with the legend on stage. Uh, are you excited by what you've heard? You asked me again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's a little bit more. There's a little bit more now. And on the pitch as well. And, and sorry, I should have added. Are you excited by what you're seeing on the pitch in Italy and... And, and, and the strides and improvements clubs. That, that has been in the or, game at different times? Yeah, well, I, I, I try to look at things from a global point of view. Yep. And, and what I'm seeing is that uh, the sport is growing, football is growing, the enthusiasm uh, mm -hmm. is continuously there. And, and of course, uh, Italy, I've been, I'm, more, I'm more Italian than anything else. I've been almost 20 years living in Italy besides my uh, career. So... Uh, anything that happens in Italy, I always try to follow it closely, and I'm very happy. It's not excitement. I'm happy to see the direction taken, and I'm sure this will bring all the benefits for for, uh, for Syria. Made in Italy, as Made they say. Italy. Yes. Uh, sure. <laughs> thanks to everyone. Uh, good luck to the Italian teams, of course, in the UEFA club competitions this week. And uh, thank, you. thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time this afternoon. A round of applause for everyone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Grazie. Thank you, right?